Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to Tia No, the Last Days of Europe. I'm your host, Italian Mocha Lover, in which we have a new face of fa 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 fascism. Few think progressive when they hear the word fascismus, let alone when they hear the name Carlos Scorza, yet expectations have been blown aside once again. New propaganda posters and brochures have been printed and posted into every major city throughout Italy. All are attempts to push the new and successful feminist rhetoric, which has dominated the Italian social and political atmosphere for weeks on end. These words speak of the Italian women, brave in the face of everyday challenges and the patriarchy, pushing forwards to bring glory to Italy. The new face, is, face of fascism has become fam words famous, the catchphrase for the feminist movement. Few ever expected the women's rights movement to pick up traction in an ideology so far right as fascism, and yet here we are. Beyond the obvious propaganda benefit of this, this also opens the door for interesting military and economic avenues not possible before. Perhaps, eventually, women could march alongside men on the battlefield or work hand-in-hand -hand on the factory floor. A whole new world has opened up, all thanks to Duce Scorza. This was unexpected, and we are watching Scotland literally beating the crap out of England and Wales. Wow. I think Dune Hammer Gaming would be very happy about this. Regardless, uh, someone did say in the comments, why is Switzerland back? They have the Swiss military junta? I have no idea. And as we saw yesterday, well, Goring's gone, the fat man's gone, replaced with Mr. Shona. So, I don't know. I really don't know. I, I've yet to play this Goring, even in my own time, so. We'll see what happens. Uh, let's see, what do we got over here? We're just building, building, building. No more gender walls. So I asked you guys yesterday whether we should do promote imperial integration, or we should encourage imperial cooperation. And overall, there's support for both sides, but there was a... Quite a bit more support, just a little bit more support actually, for, well, encourage imperial cooperation. So, really, I what it came down to was whether we do Imperial Alliance, the Rome Pact, or the Mediterranean Bloc. Uh, there wasn't that much support for Rome Pact. There's a little bit of support for Imperial Alliance, but there's just a little bit more support for the Mediterranean Bloc, so that's the route we're going to have to go down. Encourage Imperial Cooperation. Uh, Perhaps the best way forward for the Italian sphere is to encourage cooperation among the various states and colonies within the Italian sphere. This means that each state colony in the Italian sphere will be encouraged to specialize and focus its economy around a specific sector. This will be a boom for several reasons. It will allow each state colony to focus on what it is good at, rather than haphazardly trying and failing to do everything at once. This means that their economies will be more efficient and thus will strengthen the Italian sphere as a whole. But most importantly, it means that Italian economic dominance will be assured as Italy is the only member of the Italian sphere with a fully diversified and developed economy. Everyone wins, but most importantly, Italy wins. So, we got quite a few other comments to go through as well. So, someone recommends we be liberal, and Scotland has done it. Bind her, grind her, burn her with fire, cast her ashes into the sea. She shall escape, she shall aspire. She shall rise to make men free. Wow. <clears throat> well, at least something interesting happened out of this campaign so far. And, oh, a little bit of lag. No? I thought they were going to form the UK. Well, There's going to be a lot of resistance. I don't know. Who's, who's leading Scotland right now? William Wolfe. The Social Democrats beat up England. English minority. Whoa. All right, improved jet strategic bombers. Don't mind if we do. And I grab some jet tactical bombers because we can. And let's continue going on down this route. A new trade block. In order to ensure the Italian sphere's growth, and more importantly, Italian dominance and said growth, we need to standardize and strengthen the trade laws of the various Italian sphere states. We need to ensure that everyone in the Italian sphere is operating under the same rules. To do this, we shall enforce a set of trade laws on the Italian sphere states, reg regulating trade between both the Italian sphere and non Italian sphere countries. These laws will govern both imports and exports and make it so that it is far more favorable to them to trade within the Italian sphere rather than with external countries. Most importantly, it will ensure that Italy remains the main industrial supplier for these countries and the dominant player in the Italian sphere, which seems pretty good for us. Let's see, other comments include, yeah, do all reforms. Be liberal, do all reforms. Uh, yeah, I will do all the reforms, you know, as many as we can possibly do. So, that is my goal, to do that. Let's see, grab some of this, superior screen organization, thank you. And the key in cooperation. Italy's empire would not be able to sustain itself if it was not profitable, which is why I retain some of the largest oil reserves, mineral deposits, and richest farmlands in the world. The unfortunate reality of the situation, however, is that we cannot take full advantage of the resources present within the empire unless our colonial administrations tie their econ economies even closer with us. As such, more departments will be merged and more administrative checks will marked as defunct. Italy will slowly but surely encroach into the colonies and reap what is here. It is our empire, after all. Again, actually there's quite a bit of support for me to give myself more political power. Uh, yeah, I, I, I do want to and all. I don't know. Hmm. 
I, I have not done anything very very little with the military, honestly, so... I mean, yeah, these are cool and all, but... Support the army influence. Support his Borghese influence the Borghese. The Regia Marina. As well as MVSN supports us, so... I mean, I suppose we could do that. Oh, oh, they declared war on the, the Siberian group here. And... I would love to do that stuff too, but let's go and read one more thing, and then maybe I'll give myself some political power. So, Imperial Economic Community. To facilitate Imperial Economic Cooperation, it will make up... Oh, cooperation. Cooperation. It will make a lot of sense to drop some laws that will foment... A foment in economic community amongst the various Italosphere states. All the different economic standards and regulations must be standardized for the Italosphere to be effective. Thus, we shall enforce various economic laws on the Italosphere, <clears throat> the Italosphere states, to facilitate this. We shall, there shall be fixed exchange rates between the different Italosphere currencies, with the lira naturally getting a favorable rate. We shall also enforce free movement between the Italosphere states. This includes the movement of both capital and labor. This shall make it far easier to foster the economic community we have envisioned. And anti air is nice and all, but eh, it's almost we're almost there. And of course we're done with our land doctrine, which is pretty nice. Anything over here? Oh, over here. Yes, please. Good. All right. So I guess maybe I'll just give myself 200 political power. So it is what it is, because we keep losing more political power. Uh, minus. Well, maybe I'll maybe I'll go with. Hmm. I do want to do some of the reforms though. <clears throat> and is. Literally halfway through 1969 already. So let's get this focus done. And here we go. Let's open up the console command after we do this. Fire the current leader. Mm, is there anything up here? Well, close. Close. Mm. Oh, I'll just support the Iberian federal government. Wait, where's that? Oh, it's Iberian Wars. Uh, sure, why not? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, so here we go. I want to at least do one of these reforms, since we've not done anything with it yet, so... And... The Cabarini influence, let's see, best of enemies. Favors these guys, favors no preference. Regia Aronautica. Let's do that one, since they're pretty much independent. So we need 50, so 2... Um, 89. Let's see. Nothing in here. PP 289. Oh, well, I guess PP 1. There we go. Let's try. Let's see what happens. Let's influence the Air Force. Okay, so they favor it. Oh, wait. Did that not lower the political power? Hold on. Um, hmm. Ooh, more manpower. Only a thousand more manpower doesn't do much. Hold down party monarchists. Army influence. Does... Okay, so I'm not losing political power when I do this. I'm slowly losing reform points, but... Okay, I'm, I'm glad I discovered this now. I mean, I guess we must well do all that, right? They favor Borghese, Borghese, Borghese. Um... Okay, I'm, I'm glad we discovered that together. Oh, you know, I, I'm going to do it again. Uh, this is the problem with me using cons commands, because sometimes you just get too crazy with it. I want to do at least one more, because it's we've, we've done one. We've done one since 1962. Small reserve discovered. No further prospecting available. Small reserve. Algeria would be pretty good to do, actually. Um, let's do Algeria. Further develop Algeria, maybe? I mean, high reserve tapped. I love tapping reserves. So, it is what it is. I don't like using cons commands, because it doesn't make any sense for me to do so, but... If we have to, we will. And I'm trying to prove everyone's economy here, including Euro and Romania. There you go, not bad. Still building in a lot of East Africa, so they can make a lot of goodies. And what do we have here? Anything different, unique? Support Portugal, I guess. Yeah, why not? Um, Oh, Portugal popped out. Iberian federal government is falling apart. That's alright, though. Get the Imperial Committee. Oh, yeah. I like that one. Less consumer goods, more, less resources market, more civilian construction speed. To strengthen the Italosphere, we need to ensure that its various stages and colonies, or states and colonies, 
don't get any ideas about leaving it. And perhaps the greatest way to do so is make them feel like they have a voice in the Empire. Thus, to achieve this, we shall establish an Imperial Committee. This committee uh, will be composed of diplomats and representatives from the various states of the Talosphere. There is, however, a bit of debate on what precisely the committee should do. Some argue that it should be a merely a rubber stamp with no effective power at all, while others favor giving it some token symbolic power, although ultimate power will obviously still reside with Italy. Yep. Others want the committee to actually have effective power and be able to significantly influence economic decision-making. Which faction will win out, win out remains to be seen. That's good to say. Good to do. Got And there goes Iberia. And it's a good thing we don't really want to be allies anyway. Sp support the Spanish Republic. Sure, why not? Scores is like, yeah, why not? Uh, actually, can I send you volunteers? Oh, man. We have no reason to involve ourselves in the Iberian federal government's proxy war. <sighs> there goes the Iberian Wars. Operation Tenda. Without asking us much for it in the way of authoriz authorization, the navies are using chaos in Iberia to seize the Balearic Islands. The operation began with two chartered civilian flights landing at Mallorca Airport, a Trojan horse from which, mean, which men of the Fulgoda division sprang and overwhelmed the demoralized and undergun civil guards. The Iberian garrison command on the island initially believed the takeover of the airport to, air of the airport, airport, to be a CNTFAA uprising. The troops were deployed to the streets in the expectation of an urban revolt. However, this prediction was proven wrong when three SAM batteries were destroyed by gunfire of the battleship Vittorio Benito and Lifas demanding that the island surrender were dropped by the Regia Aeronautica. General Gutierrez Melado, the brigadier in charge of Mallorca's defenses, decided to fight. The first reports of combat between the two former allies came with the troops from the Sardinia Division, or no, not Sardinia, Sardagna Division, that invaded Pagura, Pagura, were met with stiff resistance by the 8th Federal Artillery Battalion, made up of stranded Portuguese troops, although the initial assault was halted. The landing of Italian tank companies soon forced the Iberians back to Galazzo. Gutierrez Mel Melado ordered his own armor reserves to the front, but those were destroyed by air attacks. After a simultaneous Iberian attempt to recover, the airport was defeated. It became clear that with more Italians entering Palma by the air and the road from the west open to the Regia Asercito's tanks, any further loss of life was futile. Melado signed an armistice with the Italians at 1,200 hours and was interned with the island's 3,000 defenders. A similar number of troops were surrounded at Ibiza and Menorca, following orders from the commanders. Just as planned, I suppose. Alright, well, at least we got something out of this. We got more resistance. Great. Great. Operation Tendo. We've done nothing wrong. Uh, MVSN, huh? Italian involvement. The Empire is, of course, in crisis. Uh, already the fragile web of regional alliances and power-sharing agreements have begun to fall apart in the midst uh, of sweeping radicalization blowing across the Middle East. From the dunes of Dubai to the docks of Alexandria, discontent simmers just below the surface, ready to put in ruin everything we've built ever since the Second World War. Today, news arrives from stirrings in Yemen. The Sultan was a skeptical ally to our ambitions at best, and yet he was a crucial piece of the web that held together the empire. His son, the reigning monarch, now faces the culmination of years of mismanagement and heavy-handed suppression revolt. Most distressingly, the sentiments preached by the Yemeni rebels under the Republican Abdullah al salal have been met with acceptance across the Middle East. Even the most optimistic voices have little to offer besides increasingly shocking reports. Whatever is to come next, we must be ready to brace in the face of the coming storm. Winds of change, Operation Tend, of course, civil war erupts in Yemen, and then, uh, yeah, having a great old time. So this requires more manpower, but three light battalions, these guys, Colonial. Oh, that's just literally two infantry divisions, huh? All right, well... Did, did anything pop out here for Yemen? No? No? no there's so much here. I don't think we can get through all this. Power justifies itself. Italy's destiny. I love that so much, but a fascist empire. Uh, the burning of an empire. Yeah. Force and force equality. Okay. Marching under the black flag. The tricolor. Tyler bilingualism. This stuff seems okay. I want to continue going down the southern part here, though. And then I will, I promise, I will get rid of um, the taxes thing. So I, we will go down that way, so. What do we have over here, actually? Support. Oh, my goodness. Sure. Oh! You know what? i got to use console commands again, then. I, I mean, it's not fair that we can't do this. But we don't get any political power. I want to get involved in Yemen. It doesn't make sense why we can't. Fund the project. That would be good. Working at a sluggish pace, what do you expect? This is okay. Don't really need to see that either. All right, then. So we'll see what happens. And then we could do that, but really we need this one. A rubber stamp committee. After much debate as to how much power to grant the Imperial Committee, it appears that the faction which favors making the committee a mere rubber stamp is 
one out. While this committee will be created, each of the Italosphere states will send representatives to it. The committee will be a sham with no effective power. In theory, the committee will be powerful, will be powerful, with it nominally being able to influence the economic policy of the Italosphere in practice, however. All the actual power resides with the Duce, with the committee not having any real power at all, which is just the way we like it. Down in Oman, the region of Dofar has been a long thorn in her side, harboring insurgents and other insurrectionist bands threatening a position within Oman. Emboldened by the recent revolution in Yemen, it has seen that it seems these insurgents have stepped up their activity and have begun posing an increased threat to our influence. Our efforts to suppress these insurgents have long been stymied by the isolationist tendencies of Sultan Said bin Taimur. And it has become clear to maintain their opposition, he must be replaced. Thankfully, his son, Kabus, has proven to be talented and ambitious in equal measure, and is more than willing to offer his blessing in crushing the rebellion should we succeed in maneuvering him into power. Our garrison in Muscat has already drawn up plans for a coup d'etat against the aging sultan, and all that remains is to be seen is it executed. Thus, we allow the specter of Ba'atism to infect yet another nation. Send the orders. All right, so let's see. Oh, we have debt? No. No. See? No debt. All right, Yemen. Oh, so we can send volunteers. That'll be good. Uh, we can send five. Not bad. Not bad. So, give me... How many do we have of these? Uh, motorized. Send up the yard. Out. Thank you. It might be too late to do this, but whatever. Actually, did I send to... Oh! I sent to the wrong group. No, I didn't. I definitely did not send to the wrong group. These guys are the people we prefer to support. Even though we prefer to support ourselves. Alright, so how many guys can we send over? Um, up to 80. I'm just going to send cats. I doubt they have planes that they can really use against us, so. And then maybe we'll go to Oman. Or whatever. Oh, no. Oh, it didn't fall apart yet. Okay, that's fine. Good. As long as it doesn't fall apart yet, I'm okay with that. Uh, what do we have down here? Alright, let's grab some more of that. Are we even making planes? Goring? Goring. I am trying to make helis, but we don't have enough army XP. I'm going to convert those guys over. Oh, wait. Oh, the motorized. Oh, my actual motorized divisions are becoming... Help. I am screwing up here. Goodbye, then. Who cares about motorized when you have planes like this? We need way more transport helicopters, which is not good. Uh, this run's been just crazy. I don't know. There's not really much I can say about it. I just... I'm not going to cut down military spending since we're going to attack anyways, so... Whatever. Let's go and test our work. That'd be good. Oh, I defeated Omsk. Goodbye, Omsk. It's a very, very large group we have here. Divine Mandate versus Central Siberian Republic. Good luck, guys. The Gross Romanches Reichstag still ends. Oh. And, and there goes Oman. Well then. I guess we'll send soldiers to whoever we can in Oman, Dofar. We don't have that many guys to send, but good luck. Oh, we're gonna need some fuel too. Oh crap. Let's start training our ships then. You guys did a great what where'd he go? There you go. I think we import enough fuel, so. There you go. And oh, more debt. No 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 no. I want to get to at least 100 billion, 100 billion GDP before we do anything else. Uh, well, this should not take too long. Hopefully. Let's go right on ahead. Have a good time. And then we'll go focus more on Aiden. Alright, these guys actually aren't looking too bad. Definitely want more transport helicopters, though. Helis... We need way more battle tanks. We just don't have a big army. That sucks. There you go. Good luck. But hopefully we'll get some army XP. Alright, so the divisions are in Oman. And we've created the Imperial Conference, which we shall do. Our oversight committee. Very good. Where is... Where are you guys? There they are. Cool. You should be led by... Who? This guy. Where is the front line? Go right on ahead. Just go straight on in. It'll be fine. You guys will be fine as well, probably. I'm not too worried about this. Uh, planes, come on over here. There you go. Now you should definitely be able to win wherever you want to go. And over here, they already did a good job. Good job, guys. Go right on in if you can. 
No worries, no worries. You guys, you just hanging out or something? Alright, and we still lost all that political power. Alright, those guys are gone. Oman's defeated Oman. That's good job, Oman. And planes. Oh, I can't send you planes. That sucks. But once we get this tile, we can actually move you guys around. Oh, actually, we gotta cut you guys way down. It's not much, but it'll do its work. Oh, we got a lot of that manpower. Look at that. Nice. I'll grab some of this. At least we got a little bit of conflict in our lives. Makes you feel like it's kind of good, doesn't it? Can you guys actually win? Yeah? Yeah? Doing pretty darn well with what we need to do. I got a whole two army XP. Not much. Oh, boy. Oh, who's exploding now? Oh, no one is. That's good. Just don't explode too much. A little explosion's okay, but too much is not very bueno. After this, we will do Italian business across the Mediterranean. Now comes more investments. We shall now direct big business in Italy, both state-owned and private enterprises, to invest across the Italosphere nations via advantageous tax incentives. There's no need to enact legislation mandating that they invest in the Italosphere directly. We're more delicate than them. A few subsidies here and a few tax breaks there shall be enough to incentivize Italy's greatest businesses to continue their investment across the Mediterranean. And that'll be a really, really good thing. I'm not even paying attention to Oman, as you can tell. Like, it'll be done, hopefully. There we go. There we go. See? Last little towel we gotta get. Oh, and you guys actually aren't doing anything, huh? Well, one of you guys is, but whatever. And Salala? Salala. Beautiful, my friends. I knew we could do it. There we go. Go back up to 100. And then hold yourself, son. Hold yourself. There we go. Oh, we can actually do renewed interest in the Empire. That's not bad. But the Mediterranean block, the time has come for Italy to forge its own faction in this dangerous world. It is critical that we that Talos fear stand strong against the menacing forces that would do Italy harm. Thus is born the Mediterranean block. A collection of states all under Italian protection, this will be the ultimate expression of Italian hegemony over the Mediterranean. Some of the members may grumble about how their alliance doesn't even pretend that this is a union of equals, but what do they know? Duccio scores and knows best, and this is the best pass forward for Italy. Oh, there goes Morocco. Can I send volunteers to Spain or Iberia or wherever they call themselves now? Uh, new, new, new. <sighs> and we already took up the islands, yes, but still. I don't even care about research. Just let time go on. We'll do, you know, things, of course. But happy 1969, everyone. Hope you're having a great year. Uh, other comments said, uh, the economy is collapsing, but poverty is decreasing. You're gosh darn right. This is fascism on steroids. Fascists know how to get rid of, how to fight poverty, we'll put it like that. Totally. Totally. Can I throw in any more factorinos? Is that? That's foreign territory, that's right. Uh, no, it looks pretty much filled up. Literally everywhere has been filled with well, goodness and such. Look at all the roads. We've built up a lot of Africa. They should be very thankful for that. Italian businesses across the Mediterranean. Great. Mediterranean block, and we'll finish the bottom part of this focus tree with renewed investments in the empire. Now that we've charted the course for the future of the Talosphere, we must not slow down. Quite the opposite, we must kick our investment in economic development of the Talosphere into high gear. We should not slack off, we should renew and strengthen our investments in the Talosphere. In particular, we shall invest state funds in the industrial development of the various empires of various states. We shall bring the Talosphere up to par, while it, Italy will naturally remain the preeminent power or economic hegemon of the Talosphere. We shall make it so that every member of the Talosphere contributes in some fashion to the greater Talosphere economy. So, it is what it is. I mean, civilian budget boost. Yeah, I should probably do that too. That's not that bad. Cool. Let's see. Let's see. Strength through the form. Empire through the reform. Through reform. Uh, someone did ask me, actually, in the last video, what is my favorite nation to play as in TNO? I'll be honest, I have no idea. I really do not know what my favorite faction is. Germany's always interesting because you can always fall apart and, you know, Hager has his path. There's so many different paths you can do with the German Civil War in Germany. Um, Italy is probably not my favorite, but, you know, in time it might be. Because if you see, like, at the time of this recording, there's, like, teasers for what Democratic Italy will be once they get a rework. So, uh, regardless, so yeah, I don't know. I play a lot of Russian unifiers. That's a lot of fun. Japan was okay, but they need a little bit more work at the time of this recording, which I know they will get eventually. 
I don't know, USA. I haven't played that much USA yet. I played as Glenn and RFK, but... You know, I don't know. I really don't know. And I definitely want to try out Gross Afrikanische Reichstadt. I mean, isn't he normally supposed to fall apart? And yeah, Zimbabwe popped out. And actually... Yeah, that sometimes pop out. These guys sometimes pop out, maybe, I guess. So, oh. Oh, no. I'm trying to build on you. Why are you killing yourselves, guys? Order collapses in Egypt. Well, Mediterranean block time. And we'll grab some of this. Thank you. Hopefully we can send some volunteers. But let's read a focus first. Oh, Egypt is definitely falling apart. And I will come down here. But, I, like I said, we did want to finish this, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ec economic hegemon. Make it so that every member will contribute in some fashion to the greater... To the greater telosphere economy. So after that one, we shall go ahead and do what? We got we got the French. We got the these guys. The Hungarians? We do get some political power. I kind of like that. The faltering government. I kind of don't mind that. Uh, oh, we haven't done this yet. Oh, yeah, we really haven't done some of this stuff yet. Hmm. This is something that's really super important to do for us, though. Uh, the burdens of the empire. The nation, the empire is a great triumph for the Italian nation in the modern age, but it's not come without its share of headaches. As must be natural with any political entity ruling over a sufficiently diverse collection of peoples in conquered territories, cohesion is limited at best. While nominally under the same government, an imperial citizen living in Naples would finally, likely find himself completely lost in Dubai or even the more integrated Benghazi. This issue of how to better uh, bring these disparate groups and form, former nations under one flag will no doubt take a good deal of effort and patience while achieving the desired unity will likely bring immense reward. The Egyptian Civil War. There's no way to put this. Egypt is in flames. Everywhere, the central government has lost control, only holding onto a small area along the Nile. The rebels abound as Egypt shatters like brittle. Already, refugees are crossing the Mediterranean in search of somewhere, anywhere to go. In this West Zone, shipping crews can hear the faint sound of gunfire and artillery as it passes through to Europe. Yet, this situation can be, still be salvaged. Our efforts to strengthen the Egyptian army with an additional aid, this war can end in short order, for now. The Egyptian government has promised to protect Italian assets whenever possible, as it becomes a campaign of reclamation. We cannot afford to sit back and wait now. We must take an active role in Egyptian affairs. At least we can salvage things. Alright, so who can we support now? Muslim Brotherhood? No. You guys? Yes. I still send five divisions. I should probably stop putting so many guys over here. Let's see, you guys. You, you, and you. Well, actually, let's go with... Come on. There we go. At least we can get a little bit of action here. Okay, so we sent quite a few planes, actually. That's kind of nice. Uh, all but you. A little bit of lag. Ah, uh, they're falling apart, too. I don't really care. And here we go. We got full amount of oil. We could use a little bit more tungsten, which is fine with me. I guess we'll trade with America, whatever. There we go. Well, at least we're going to... Divert our investments and construction projects elsewhere for now. Oh, look. We have a silver subbies here. Another ship, another destroyer. Cool. Tokyo standoff. Has the Empire of Japan gone mad? Probably. And oh, we're slowly increasing air superiority, or air XP, I should really say. Oh, there goes Falangus Spain. Goodbye. And we've arrived. Great. Let's have a good time, my friends. If we're not having a good time, what's the point? I'm not sure. I'm not even going to read your effects and such. Supply is going to be god awful down here, but you know what else is new? Throw it on there because we can. Let's go right on in. <clears throat> okay, we did a great job. Yay! I don't want to fight in Sudan though, but honestly, we probably should. So, what's going on down here? Can I send in volunteers? Anybody? Oh, these were my guys, so... Oh, I just suffered hungry stuff. Oh, I can't do anything down here. Big sadness. Ah, renewed vest. The burdens of the empire. Let's fund the project. And then the fascist empire. The Italian Empire was born under fascism, and with fascism it must be extricably linked if it is to survive. Fascism as a beacon of order and stability, not to mention the embodiment of state authority as a natural system for administering an empire. Just as the fasci are the collection of many thin sticks into one unbreakable, intractable bundle, so too will our empire bind and merge with the collective wills and dreams of all their subjects under the banner of one state. They shall forevermore be perched on the shoulder of Mother Italia, safeguarding her wherever her journeys may go. 
It's almost 70. I'm just going to go do this stuff. It's fine with me. <clears throat> After this, I guess we'll do them and then them. Why not? Ah, uh, the uh, Iberian Wars. Oh, can we send Bolt? We can, but not really, no. Uh, there we go. Oh, nope, we got that. Nope. Air Assault 3, just go in and start focusing on some industry. Oh, uh, grab some resource extraction because we can. Alright, not bad. Oh, we have people down here too. I forgot about that. Um. It's a big sadness. I would love to send volunteers. But they just won't let us. Don't go breaking my heart. I just want to get involved. Sudan Defense Force. Uh, Mr. Ibrahim. Big sadness. Really quite big sadness. Burns of the Empire with the Fascist Empire. You get more reform points. It's not bad. And I guess, let's see. Let's go back up here. I want to do the Pact on Rome thing still, so. Uh, and I'll do the Youth Pass 5. It seems that the Duce has forged a solution to the unruly students for better or for worse. While some students and elderly may be displeased at the reforms that have been made, hopefully said reforms will be able to calm down the youth of Italy. We get a whole 1, 2, 3, 4, 10,000 manpower. Lovely. Are we demobilizing? No, we're not. No, that's okay then. Not bad. Oh, we're still not at 100 billion. Come on, man. I'm 31 minutes into this video, and I'm all out of coffee. Hmm. Oh, this is looking okay. Uh, Bulgaria. Oh, they're kind of independent. Hellenic states, for some reason, still not influenced by us. Serbia is not influenced by us. Neither is Hungary, which makes sense, actually. And they're doing okay in France. So at least we have the Mediterranean bloc. Wow, this sucks. We have a t almost non-existent border with Romania. We really should probably get the Serbs with us. Or at least the Hungarians. The Hungarians would be really good. On IPAX. Oh, we, we saw Scandinavia before, but they collapsed, apparently, be when Goring gave up. All right. <clears throat> it's time to get some more manpower, isn't it? And it's almost 1970. So close. Two days left, so let's go ahead and grab actually some of this. I want more research speed. All right, youth has been passed by. We got to go with a secular society. The modern society is not a religious one. In fact, a country should strive to make sure religion is not too powerful. Modern society. To this end, we should move against the church-owned schools and begin propaganda campaigns to enlighten those Italian people about the superiority of a secular society. These efforts, with luck, will harm the influence of the Catholic Church in Italy greatly. We still have all this stuff to do up here. I completely ignored all this stuff, which probably is not a good idea, but... Futurist air designs? More modern path seems like a good idea to go down. Oh, wait. Do we want Borghese, though? Uh, gas, gas, gas. Sognos influence. I don't want more Sognos influence. Hmm. Hmm, hmm. We've hit 100 billion, my friends. 100 billion. Hopefully, they'll stay that large. All right, so we have the Futures Air Designs. Scores are down a more modernist path. Knights of the Sky. Well, that's not bad. Wings of Fire sounds awesome. Man, Iberia is just blowing up. Futures Designs. Look to the SAF. Yeah. Signal Companies. Oh, we get some more political power. Logistics. Decrease Sognos influence. The pilot project. Increase Sognos influence. Okay then. Expand the black shirts. More modern. Oh wait, we're supposed to do Sognos influence or Bolognese? 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 I don't even know at this point. Yeah. Seems Ooh, what is that? Daily fashion support goes up more. More modern paths, sideline these guys, so there's so many paths. But we do want to do that one. Budget boost. Well, that's fine. We'll do Secular Society first. Can we get involved in more nations, please? I love getting involved in other nations' affairs. I'm such an American. Oh. Please, let me just kill you. Or kill people against that don't like you. After Secular Society, we gotta go, what was yours is now mine. The Catholics have owned too much property throughout Italy. It's obvious we must expropriate or expropriate all a papal property outside the Vatican City. As it cuts the influence of the Pope, thankfully, there's not much church owned land as there once was. So such a move will not seem too controversial as long as we frame it as necessary for the betterment of the fascist cause. 
It's all for the fascist cause. Just remember that. Forever and ever it will be for the fascist cause. So we're missing a lot of helicopters. We're not making any scout copters. Main battle tanks not looking good. Pray they survive. Well, what happens over there is what happens. Uh, they're pretty much done. Who's, what's LBJ doing? LBJ for the USA. National Endowment for the Arts. Miscellaneous costs. That's what I play as the United States in TNO again. Very well funded schools. It will be removed, huh? In about a month. Well, happy 1970, everyone. Hope you're having a great year. The Office of Economic Opportunity. Support for expanding coverage. Oh. Alright, looking pretty good. Battle groups, why not? Ah, uh, 101 billion. Just because when we cut taxes. If we can find another way to, you know, get some more income. Because it's cutting taxes is minus 50%, which is not good for us, but, you know, it is what it is. What's yours is mine. We get a whole civilian factory and a whole one reform point. Doesn't that make you feel good, everyone? Now, once Iraq collapses, I wonder if there's a way for us to deal with the oil crisis. I'm going to hope that there is or say that there is, but we don't know. We really don't know. That's still not looking bad. A nation of many faces. Italy, as it stands now, is a very diverse nation in every way imaginable. Arab Muslims by the Italian Christians and bustling street... By from the Italian Christians and bustling street markets. No slavery here. Agnostics marry devout theists. Chinese traditionals converse with Alpine pagans. Italy is a nation that holds many different beliefs and many different ethnicities and many different people. To consign itself to a single following would be a dismissive towards the many other citizens who serve under the Italian banner. And so as it is today, Italy is a secular nation by decree of Duce Scorza. A move considered radical by many more conservative elements in Italy will serve as an un unexpected solution to the current papal crisis. By not playing the Pope's game of religion, Scorza will inevitably win either way. Of course, though, this has placed quite a few divides within the nation, but it's hoped time will mend any differences and bring the whole country into a brighter future after all. We're all sons and daughters of Italy. Why not act as such? Is that the right move? Hopefully. So we've got a whole lot of fascismo uh, stuff there, but we're doing what's yours is mine. All talk and no action doesn't seem like a good thing to do. Fascism is Christian? Well, fascism is futurist. The fascist idea has always been intertwined with futurism. The movement was born in Italy, and the goal of the futurist movement was to liberate Italy from the past, similar to fascism. We must move beyond the past of our Christianity and Catholicism and move into a new, modern, secular future. Here's just a shining beacon of progress, which we get slightly more political power, but we lose stability, so basically we get nothing. And 3% more research speed with neo-futurist ethos. I gotta look up what futurism is. And I guess, at this point, women no longer enter the universities. So much for the new face of fascism. Uh, so not bad. I mean, I wish, I just wish, you know, Italy had more things to do. You know, I know that Italy is absolutely getting a rework, and it probably be actually really, really great. Because the TNO devs, I mean, they put their heart and soul into, you know, the mod, and they do a great job, which is one of the reasons why I love this mod so much. But time will tell, and I'm sure they'll do great. Now, it's yours is mine, mine is yours, and then we'll probably do the church contained. We're doing negotiations with the church. State-controlled industry, true meritocracy, reformed economy, European meddling. Oh, wow. The Imperial Committee, rubber stamp committee, new investments, oh, well, whatever. So, let's go ahead and do the fascism is futurist. Well, everyone, we've already done most of the church contained, contained, which the question of the Vatican Church in modern day Italy has been answered. While there are some unsatisfied with their solution, Scorza knows that he has made the best choices for all of Italy, which we shall finally do back to Rome. Now that Scorza has implemented many reforms and answered the questions of the youth, women, and the church, he can return to Rome and begin the process of ruling. Ave Scorza. Very nice, Scorza. Nice job. We've got about a month left for that. And. It's already May 11th, 1970. We've done this, and I will come back down here eventually, but give it a little bit more time. And autocracy on the way to democracy? Why not? So, Ent Nacionale di Assistenza Fascista. Although the recent developments in the party have certainly led to the people gaining more trust and power in the inner workings of the state, there remains one major gap we have not yet crossed. As of right now, very few of the citizens of Italy are able to vote on the matters of who is elected to represent the region, of course, still being ultimately chosen by the state. For the sake of ensuring our people's support, we may take this one step further, allowing the people to directly vote on the fascist candidates. While, as always, officials which make it onto the ballot will be controlled solely by us, this step would be a major leap in the perceived power of the people over the party, and will certainly be met with a positive reaction by both the populace and the free world, which we lose political power, get some stability because we go from elite voting to registered voting. So that's not too bad. Not great, but not too bad. Oh yeah, keep building up. And let's see, we got some more research done off screen. That's what we're currently doing. 
military construction, battle groups, enhanced industrial administration, and improved oil processing. So, we'll see. A deteriorating situation. The Iraqi president is dead, killed by his own countrymen. While the relationship with Qassam was never perfect, his death has thrown the chaos and the country into chaos. Already, unrest is reaching never-before-seen heights and rioting afflicts most major population centers. Given the concerns about the safety of Italian nationals, a limited evacuation has already begun for important individuals and civilian contractors. Expanding this effort to include all non-essential personnel will drastically increase costs, but also reduce the strain of our overstretched security forces. Furthermore, if things deteriorate, it would make a withdrawal from the colonies significantly easier. On the other hand, we could simply expand our security detachment, preserve the safety of our citizens, and assist in maintaining order, if at the cost of expanding our presence during the time of instability. Care about Iraq? No, expand the evacuation effort to save as many as possible. Absolutely. And this will be done in a few weeks, which is fine. And by the end of this episode, we will abolish, basically, taxes. So, very good. Back to Rome. After that, we shall... We, do we need to control this one? Yeah, we do. Control the Gerarchia. The Gerarchia, as useful as it may be, is ultimately flawed. With the masses, or oh, while the masses enjoy the organization's publications, they yearn for something more, a new source, written by the ordinary citizen, free from the direct control of the state. While, of course, we cannot allow just anything to be published. That could spark the end of our regime, but some amount of pr press freedom must be given in order to truly satisfy the people's desires. We shall just relax the strict laws on the sharing of information, and perhaps even some independent news organizations shall be able to form throughout the country. Many of the existing hardline fascists in the party, however few there remain, grumble at the sight of the Italy using, losing yet another piece of its control. But for the sake of the people and the regime, it is necessary to at least let some information flow freely once more, and we replace it with state press, with censor press, and back in Rome. A silent bird, followed just outside the Scorza's view for the whole car arrived from the airport, Swooping and diving under, between and beside street posts, canopies, people and cars, it followed on. Not a single chirp could be heard from its beak the whole way through, but scores of new was there, the black bird, one with a sharp Avanta black beak and ruffle feathers. Piercing beads sat in its eye sockets, jumping back and forth between people and objects. Scores of knew what the bird was. He never was a very he was never a very spiritualistic man, but even who knew it was a sign, a herald, a messenger of things to come, but events to follow and the path to be tread. So many things were left to be completed and he had only begun. You see Italy through them all, swooping and dividing diving under between and besides war, famine, crisis, and death. And there was a solemn feeling to it. The bird did not sing. The bird did not cry. Was it was it trying to tell him? Had he done everything right? Was everything truly going to be okay? He had conquered so many problems by now. The women's rights movement, the youth of the party, the church, everything was solved by him. Everything was solvable to him, unlike Siano, but there was still a longing for those times when the urgency was not there. Were they dying on fine wines and fat meats every night, knowing the next morning would be good? When everything still stood, just for a moment, it remained outside of lure. When the car screeched to a halt in front of the parliament, scores his mind did not. Stepping up from the car to the pavement, a silent brush of the air could be heard overhead. The blackbird soared and flew into the sky, flapping against the breeze, desperate yet determined to go on, and over the parliament's arc did it fly, disappearing from sight. So there was so much left to do and so little time. We'll see it to the end. Yes, we shall. Ah, uh, control the Garaccia. I love it. We still have two weeks left. Now, Iraq. Please do not collapse into a burning, boiling, destru destructive force down here. Please. The stability is actually pretty high. They said they have issues and riots, but the stability is pretty high. I mean, stability should be, effect should be affected by riots, right? Now, of course, they're led by a certain no-faction Iraqi command council, but still. Oh, never mind. The veto. veto. Hello. Legacy of the 14th, Dawa Ascendant, Italian interference is always good, inefficient oil industries, go figure, and the specter of Baatism. Well, you might have to remove that, guys. But at least we have good relations. We have great relations with the Iraqis. Expanded support ship roles? Why not? Do anything over here? Oh, we finished the focus too. Good. Well, let's go ahead and do control the Garaccia. And we shall go ahead and start reading about allow official currents. The notion that every single member of the party can remain under the direct vision and control the duce is laughable. With every appointment makes, our grip on the exact thoughts and methods of every single party official becomes even more tenuous. It is time to cease our fruitless efforts towards controlling every single word said in the Palazzo of Venezia, and accept that differing viewpoints will be said and even somewhat tolerated. Debate shall once again occur, however limited, and may not always be positive for the duce. Yet another power lost, but everything necessary shall be done in order to continue our grasp on Italy, which we get... More infrastructure construction speed and civilian construction speed by 10% for 200 days. Not bad. Well, everyone, it looks like the oil crisis has erupted. How great. And also, off screen, I gave myself a little bit more political power so we can increase special forces deployment. We now have the oil crisis, black gold, red sand, and here we go. As you can see, here's all the console commands I've used because I want to increase special forces deployment. I want to get involved in Iraq as fast as possible, but unfortunately, we can't send anything. 
Oh, now we can. Okay, yeah, now we can. That's good. Um, honestly, we don't need that many extra divisions. Uh, so, it is what it is. But, uh, I'll just, oof. That's really the greatest thing to say, just, ugh. Ooh, wow. Awesome. Good, they better allow us over there. We better shape up these soldiers over there. As best as we possibly can. So we can send up to 80. It's not bad. Where's our cast? Oh, you guys are doing... You guys are doing work. Well, yeah, just send over these guys. I'll be fine. This will help delay them dying over there. And, of course, right now we're still doing what? In terms of focus? We're still doing allow official currents, which is not bad. But, oh, oh boy. Elected Federali. We cannot concede full control to the masses of Italy. Such a move would incite nothing but utter chaos throughout all the nation. It is clear that we may no longer have the treat of democracy over their mouths, ne never to let the people bite. We shall take inspiration from the Roman Empire of Europe. There shall be established a separate a body, a plebeian council of sorts, elected by the people through a nominally d democratic system. Although they would not control the day-to-day -day business of the government as a whole, they shall hold significant sway over the business of Italy through powers such as limited veto and the ability to amend legislation. The plebeians shall have the reward, even so if it is bittersweet, in Middle Eastern tensions. The current reports that we are getting from the Middle East are very worrying. Instability and unrest plagues the entire region, and if things continue like this, we may be in serious trouble. The world's main oil suppliers are located in the Middle East, and the situation spirals out of control. We could be looking at a global oil crisis of unprecedented proportions. We must act if we want to avoid this or minimize the damage to our country. Troubling news, the crisis comes home. Oil is not a resource like any other. An abundance of it can create a nation where none existed. Prop up any army without any other loyalty and pave a road through the desert. A lack of it can crush empires. The crisis in the Middle East has threatened Italy's oil and subsequently the Italian Empire itself, not to mention the living standards of millions of Italian families. While the geopolitics of the Middle East are incredibly complex, we must involve ourselves in the evolving crisis less to go to our interests and in doing so, threaten the existence of the fascist re regime itself. Whatever we must do, whoever we must work with, we shall do so without hesitation. We have no choice but to get involved. Um, well, yeah. I've already sent soldiers over there. Alright, so look at this. Ooh, look at all this stuff over here. What can we do? Oh, please don't tell me our soldiers are coming back. Sorry for a project. Oh, they already are back. God dang it. Urgh. I can't send volunteers. This is the only thing I wanted to do. Yeah. Oh, change of... Oh, completely change of focus. Oh, Clash of the Axis. Germany... Oh, Germany invades. We will win? Well, let's see. The fuse shortens. It has been struck with a crisis unparalleled in its severity since the end of the Second World War. While we have worriedly gazed over the northern border in fear, it is... Uh, the Middle East, where the dam is finally burst. The ever-growing turmoil in the oil-rich deserts of Arabia, Egypt, and the Levant have potential to not only devastate the foundation of our economy, but the very integrity of our empire. The masses lurking in the darkness who have reason to oppose their interests throughout the vast lands we control are swiftly mobilizing against us, and if we do not rapidly seal the cracks, they may just succeed. On the home front, citizens once loyal to Italy alone begin to act in defiance of the state, and shadowy plots begin to form over whether the Duce deserves to remain in the seat of power. With everything against him, if it is... Duce Scorza alone that can manage the flames of this great calamity. For even if we cannot beat back this encroaching inferno of chaos, who can? So does this mean we cannot do getting rid of taxation? Are you kidding me? That is so dumb. We should still be able to get rid of taxation. Like, man, I don't like how it just the focus tree just changes like that. It should just open up a new part of the focus tree. You shouldn't remove parts of the focus tree. Just add new parts in. You know, depending on the situation, the context, but... React to the emergency. We already don't have political power anyways. War support, full mobilization. Um, hmm. Weekly war support goes up. For, that's not bad. I kind of want to do that one. Full mobilization. We will take everything we can muster if we wish to avoid a protracted conflict in the deserts of Africa. God himself couldn't save us if we ran out of oil halfway through the midst of battle, or even worse, strain the already battered economy even further to finance an unbreakable quagmire. It may be disproportionate to the foreign press, and it may be may seem unnecessary to the populace at large, but ultimately their opinion is meaningless in the face of survival of the nation. So sound the horns and beat the drums. We shall cast a die and hope that hope their superior firepower can win the day. The tanks, artillery, planes, boats, men, all of them. Every division on the alert, every squadron on standby, every flotilla prepared for action that might of Italy shall be roused in its entirety. We shall enter full mobilization and strike the fear of God in any enemy that may challenge us, which doesn't make any sense since we got rid of God already. Oh, we still have a deficit. Well, that didn't hurt us too bad, actually, the GDP growth. Still minus 5.6 billion. We have the... Do we have the oil crisis? Oh, there it is. Yeah, um, uh, that really hurts us pretty badly. But, uh... All right, it could be could be actually a lot worse. I don't know. I'm part crisis. The situation in the Middle East continues to deteriorate. With the E9 crisis and the domestic situation growing ever more tenuous, malicious actors within the Italian society have seen fit to begin their plots against the Duce. Regardless, these unfortunate circumstances shall not break what we have worked so hard to achieve. Italy 
has weathered greater crises or crises in the proud histories. Foreign doomsayers sounding the death knell for the Italian Empire are missing one vital element by the Italian people. Our unique per perseverance that lets us build our towering empire in the first place. We will drive back the chaos and instability of the Middle East. We shall weather the ever worsening oil crisis. More importantly, no matter what, we shall emerge from it stronger than ever before. This is what the Duce commands, and it will be what we shall accomplish regardless of the difficulty. Viva Italia. Followed up with uh, the best defense, firm related plan, intensify sim activity. From General HQ Memo 3329. We, all, we need all the intelligence that we can get our hands on if we are to have any chance of successfully resolving the situation. The orders have already been sent out to units in the colonies to gather as much relevant, relevant data as possible for analysis in Rome. We need everything and everything, even the smallest detail, can determine the outcome of a battle, an operation, campaign, or war. Per El Duce Squares' orders, all SIM personnel currently performing operations deemed non-essential will be transferred to stations in the Gulf and the Levant effective immediately. Analyzing hypothetical enemy uh, alliances, terrain mapping, code breaking, and other pertinent assignments to the oncoming wars are to be distributed as soon as possible. Not bad. And we'll do Vincere e Vinceremo. Oopsie. Oh, what is this over here? Fun the project? Yep. Yeah. There you go. Hey, working at a normal pace. Not bad. Not bad, I would say. Oh, let's, we got that going. Let's grab some of this. More output. Yes, please. We actually could really, really, really use more output. Let's grab some of this, too. Not bad. Oil crisis? I would say it's not a bad thing right now. So, let's do this focus. The face of El Duce shall appear on the TV of Italy, hoping hopefully will broadcast through the world. He will bear a stern countenance, appearing like a frozen mask of barely concealed rage. The people of Italy will not wait expectantly for the proclamation of their leader, ready to be whipped into a patriotic frenzy if he so chose to accept their passions. My people, our nation finds itself in a dark hour. Our enemies have so erroneously decided to strike against the very heart of Italy. They expect us to give in. They hope that, that we are not Caesars or Scipios, but Varuses, driven to resignation and defeated by, or defeat by unexpected adversity. They could not be more wrong, and their misjudgment shall be their end. Shall we acquiesce to the building? We shall we shame ourselves by lying prostrate to some petty prince or other? No, we shall show them the foolishness of making enemies of all of Italy and her people. The line that has set slumbering in her den since the time of war shall once again roar. No debt. And then, the best of defense. To protect the interests of the nation and the people, we shall crush any threat to our interests and our prosperity. If our enemies expect us to roll over for the threats of neophyte states and overambitious princes, they have surely mistaken the stalwart character of the Third Duce of the Italian Empire. We shall push ahead with the cry of defiance in our throats and the assurance of victory in our hearts. It shall fall to you, brave soldiers of our nation, to crush any and all who would dare stand against us. We shall strike into the very heart of our foes. We shall give them no reprieve and spare them no mercy. We have chosen, they have chosen to make themselves the adversary of the people of Italy, and they shall soon learn how foolish your mistake was to do so. Oh, come on. There you go. And people are still killing each other around here? No wars are going on, actually, right now. Oh, whoops. I want some. Uh, ongoing conflicts. Iberian... Now, not much? Italy... Well, not Italy. Iberia is killing itself, but hey. Yeah, what else is new? You know. And then formulate a plan. With our resources limited as they were, we need to choose our avenue of approach carefully. The Saudis and the Ba'atis po both pose their own unique problems and solutions. We decide to strike either of them. We can only be one or the other. The boys at SIM and the GHQ have confirmed that our logistics can handle both adequately. That being said, we can compile every useful scrap of intelligence we have on both groups into workable operation and campaign sketches. Better to have a good sense of what we would have would be getting ourselves into with other options, they say. When the time comes to leap into action, it will soon be through these well-played lands of the power of the nation. It's channeled through. It only remains to be seen as to who that power will be directed against. So, break the Ba'atists. The pan Arabia's factions strike the Saudis. Ancient problems, modern solutions. Uh, do we want the Saudis or not? Duce and Anatolia. Katif Uprising. Pillars of sand. We declare we declare war on Saudi Arabia. Our Baatists. I kind of don't like the Baatists here. Hmm. So do we go to war with Syria, basically, or the Saudis? Throwing dead weight overboard. Economics is a dismal sign. Sometimes to save the economy, you must spend money where it's needed and not where it is most desperately desired. Our decision to leave civilian matters as the last priority may appear callous. Yet in saving the economy and our bottle industry first, we ask for all Italians. If they must serve now so that they will survive later instead of slowly wasting away to a certain death, and this is what we will do. They, that, that's what they will do. They will thank us in the future, perhaps. Cut costs everywhere? Um, honestly, we don't care for either one, really. Oil crisis. Kingdom of black gold. I'm kind of pulling towards 
Yeah, I'm pulling towards to help out the Saudis, so. Break the Ba'ath. The Ba'aths are a dangerous bunch of nationalists and rabble rousers. They may not, we may not have the greatest relationships with the Saudis in recent years, but we cannot ignore a blatant threat to our territorial integrity on the scale of the widespread pan arabist uprising that figures in the Ba'athist movement seem to wish for as an endgame. Compare to that, a little blab blood between us and the kingdom is trivial at most. Besides, in our time of need, the Saudis have extended the hand of true friendship towards us when they could have easily struck in our vulnerable flanks. The dream of pan Arabism, pan Arabism is going to die in smoke and flame at our hand. All right, so that means we're going to have to go to war with them eventually, so. Uh, modern problems, ancient solutions. The Baathist strengths come from the motivation because they fought for the cause of nationalism. A noble goal to be sure, but we cannot abide. <clears throat> the strong will always dominate the weak, and this is simply a fact of nature and as always will be as such. But whether the motivation is noble or ignoble, uh, fair or unfair, the fact remains that the sentiment of self-determination is great historical success, and we cannot ignore its power. Fortunately for us, we have an equally powerful force on the side of our allies, faith, Roth, aggressive faith. Islam once straddled the Mediterranean from Spain to Turkey with its zeal, and our Saudi friends have determined to return to the state. We cannot care less about the theological debates, but if it helps, with, helps us get results, we will embrace any ideology with open arms. Bombing runs begin? Hmm. Meet with Faisal. I like that one. The current king of Saudi Arabia could well be called many things. Ambitious in the extreme, open to modernization while still accepting of stradation, a stradition, a seeker of pan-Islamic unity, and a dangerous enemy. Of all of these are in and of themselves true, and yet separately they are not an accurate portrayal of the man called King Faisal. Even together, the current monarch and one of the richest nations on earth is so complicated and individual and so also contained that descriptions likely only scratch the surface. Duce scores himself as a man of similar complexities and has written to the Muslim king, proposing a meeting with where a return to the past friendship between the empire and Arabia may be brokered. Followed up with embrace Wahhabism, which probably is a crazy idea to do. Wahhabism, one of the most fundamental strains of Islam, is for better or for worse, a current state promoted faith of our new partner Saudi Arabia. Rather awkwardly, due to often extreme nature and anti Western bent, Wahhabism is not generally tolerated faith in the empire. Naturally, uh, we have considered it dangerous to greater imperial survival to disencourage religious messages that could be easily understood as nationalist or terroristic rallying cries. Nothing about the present circumstances has much changed our evaluation of this interpretation of Islam, but it seems that our hands may be somewhat tied. If we continue to bar Wahhabist clerics from preaching in our Muslim heavily territories, we may lose their trust and this crucial alliance may collapse as disastrously as, as our axis with Germany did. So for the time being, we have little choice but to allow those firebrands and zealots to pr proselytize as they please. It can't hurt that much, right? Speaking with Faisal. Faisal bin Abdulaziz al Saud has emerged as a preferred candidate for the throne of Arabia. A pragmatist to the core, courteous to his friends and cynical with his foes, the prince is a man after our own heart. In the meeting with Faisal, we can set out the terms for order in the Middle East for decades to come. There will be no guarantee that the lines drawn and the spheres of influence agreed on will last, but not even in the medium term. But if they will buy us both enough time to construct a new order which is mutually beneficial, so much the better. Above all, Faisal knows that his own ambitions after such a meeting will be tied extensively inextricably to our own fortune in the oil crisis and mutual dependence that can be a powerful bond for the peace indeed. A gentleman's agreement is indeed. Fleet and command control, not bad. And we're going to go to grab some better artillery. Why not? After we do that, we'll bombing runs begin. Finding on foot across inhospitable deserts and mountains on the Middle East was always going to be a daunting prospect. Our enemies will be entrenched with adequately or adequate supply lines to boot while we will be advancing into foreign territory with supply lines from the state or the, from the sea or Saudi Arabia. Hardly an ideal situation. So we have a few tricks up our sleeves, even the odds to the extent a bomb is a trick and a bomber is a sleeve, that is. Most of the Middle Eastern nations have severely undeveloped air forces compared to our own, and we should waste no time in exploring this situation by bombing each of them back to the Stone Age. With Saudi oil reserves supporting our planes, we can grind down their armies before we can even step upon their shores. Which would probably be a very good thing. I love bombing Middle Easterners. Hmm. Hmm. A convenient friendship. As the press snaps photos of the historic agreement, King Faisal beams warmly to reporters and various officials eager to talk with one of the most world's richest and, if only for the moment, most influential men. Although normally a fairly taciturn, a taciturn perhaps even doer man, the warmth Faisal displays is all genuine. While the kingdom is hardly helpless, having so-called fourth world power as an ally would be enough to excite any leader with the ambitions that the Faisal possesses. Next to the enthusiastic monarchs, it's Duce Escorza, who in stark contrast betrays almost no emotion at all. Or one might think at first glance. However, a closer look in one might just detect the faintest hint of a scowl, the ever so upturned lip, a quiver brow. This partnership may not be the mutual understanding it was advertised it was as after all. Oh. So much reading now. Very quick. How's the budget looking? Not bad. 
All right, and the soldiers of God, the faith is a powerful force. Even in the more secular times, and one only needs to look upon the current balances of the Middle East to see the proof. Theologians may ar argue over doctrine and scripture, but for men of action and power, men like scores of the faith of the the value of faith truly lies in its ability to convince and influence and control. The Saudis have learned this lesson and taken it to heart admirably, interweaving their administration with the Wahhabist strain of Islam since their dynasty's inception into power. We can take a page from their book and turn righteous fear into just another tool in our arsenal for disrupting our opponents. Now, if we straight go to war with them, we gotta have to figure out how we best get involved in there because, well, we're gonna probably have to navally invade. The United. Oh, we go straight from here. Okay, that's fine. Oh, even these guys in... Oh, okay. Interesting. So, do soldiers of God. Let's go ahead and get our armies ready. Now, I don't want to send everyone in the Middle East. Because supply is going to be god-awful, probably. You guys do that. You And I'll send the tanks. You guys come over here, too. We could navally invade, I suppose. But I don't really feel like doing that, maybe. Oh, well, we probably will actually have to. Let's go and set this up, then. One, two, three. From here to the port... Should be good enough. Uh, but station you guys right here. Cool. Nope. Oh, and we can survey for a project. Awesome. Soldiers of God, no mercy for terrorists. A terrorist does not have civil rights, a terrorist does not have judicial rights, and a terrorist does not have human rights. They have sacrificed their morality and sacrificed their very humanity. If they do not wish to be seen as such, we will oblige them. Our prisons will run far more cost-effectively when we don't have to call or don't have to for the normal amenities. A string of such facilities to housing disturbed of the peace will be established in our wake, and we might even leak images of how we deal with such criminals. Perhaps once these scorpions learn the price of such actions, they will be a little less rash in the future. Counterterrorism operations? Is this how we're going to form CSGO? Maybe I shouldn't slash the budget at the time like this, but you know, whatever. Soldiers of God, no mercy for terrorists, scum. Alright, lions in the sand. The Middle East, as we know it has, for decades, it was always an artificial existence birth from the foreign intervention. First, after the Great War, and once again following our triumph in the Second World War and the subsequent rise of the ill-fated triumvirate that was meant to be a stabilizing force for the entire Mediterranean world. Now, that such a dream is forever lost, however, the precise rulership of the many regions that make up the Middle East is an open question. Once we resecure our position there, we will have to... To, we have certain obligations to meet towards our once again partner, the Saudis. We've had a strong position in the Gulf states for many years now, but perhaps with a stable and powerful accomplice, we can afford to give a little ground, or a lot of ground, for Saudi Arabia does not do anything for cheap. Uh, let's go do some more gun stuff. Yay! Happy 1971, everyone. Hope you're having a great year. Ed's about to get a little bit more violent here. Raise the sword of Islam. Despite our best efforts, it seems like the, some Arabs persist in seeing a war mostly with Italians on one side and the Arabs on the other, as a war between Arabs and Italians. Thankfully, the degeneracy and godlessness of the Ba'athist movement has given us and our Saudi allies a wonderful opportunity to shift the narrative to something more to our liking. By employing the Saudi monopoly on Islam's holy sites and their influence over the broader ulema, we will be able to paint the conflict against the Ba'athists not as a colonial struggle, but as a battle between Islam and secular. In this way, we will win Arab hearts and minds and soon the war. Wow, we send a lot of stuff to... Oman, Yemen, Saudi Arabia, holy cow. Cutting off cute, cute B. With the lines drawn in the sand of the Saudis, we have gained an important concession on one of their now past dependents. Saeed Kut B, a leading luminary of the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt, has received generous assistance from the Saudis in the past, yet now the Saudis have abandoned him, and this will have severe consequences for his movement in Egypt and prestige as a resistance leader. Kut B's abandonment by those who saw as Muslim brothers, Muslim brothers in arms will be a tough pill to swallow for him. Yet let it be also a lesson. That faced with the realities of geopolitics and oil, there's no room for idealism. Like a fish taken out of the water? Sweet. And the lessons from Graziana. Graziana. When victory in the conquest of Ethiopia was finally proclaimed, there were some among the natives who were too stubborn or foolish to accept defeat. They believed that they could bring down an imperial juggernaut with thousands of insignificant pinpricks. Marshal Rodolfo Graziani disabused them of any such hopes. The inter international community called it barbarism and inhumane, but so what if it was? War itself is heck. And a country that engages in such heck without resolve of the devil will never truly triumph as a campaign gets underway and country after country once again falls to our might. We will no doubt encounter, encounter similar situations. Needless to say, our response will be unwavering and merciless. Not bad. And we're done with all the stuff again. Great. Grab some of this. More land night attack? I think so. Slash, spend, spend. Uh, ubi solidud. Solitudinum facutent. 
Or whatever. The Arabs refuse to see reason. They send it. They send back in spite of the offers of peace and cooperation we sent them. They told us that we are worse than the Germans. That is enough. They think we're worse than the Germans. Then we will show them how right they are. We will pay them for this insult until they beg us to let the Germans finish them. They will pay with everything they have, with their oil, blood, and their lives. They will pay with their children. They will flee in terror when they see the Regia. I will not take in the sky, but there will be no shelter from us. They will burn all of them. They will burn in their houses. They will burn in the open. They will scream until their lungs are filled with fire. They will beg their false god for mercy. Mercy from the Italians who are worse than the Germans, and their god won't be able to help them because perhaps we are worse than the Germans. And Pachem Appellant. It is done. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. As the wind carries the ash of those who oppose us, peace can finally return to the Middle East, and more importantly, oil can resume its flow towards our thirsty industries. Some cry, calling us monsters and murders, but still, they use a car and they heat their home in oil. Our oil. How do these good, kind souls think that we could survive without oil? Kindness isn't heat houses. We have done the only sensible thing, removing those who would jeopardize development throughout the world, and the world knows it. While some nations criticize us, it's in secret that they shake our hands and thank us, for they know we did the right thing. We brought peace to the Middle East. It's a pity that there's almost none left to enjoy it. Can't wait. All right, let's get our plans ready to go. All right, boys. It's time for a good old time in the Middle East. And we're going to do more ground crews. Ooh, nice. And let's grab some of this. Why not? Oh, nice. Not bad. And after this one, what shall we do? We could do crash of the axis by a reactive emergency. As with any crisis, the first order of business must be to control our initial emotional reactions and begin assessing the situation within a collected and collected manner. With our oil supply effectively cut and the economy struggling to stay afloat, our response must be swift and decisive. We hope to contain the damage and more importantly ensure the domestic situation doesn't worsen any further. Some of these measures may have short negative short-term consequences, and almost certainly will be unpopular among the wider populace, but that is the cost that we will have to pay for our continued survival. Crucial oil supplies are going to be strictly rationed, with the military having the highest priority towards receiving the black gold. Banks may be temporarily shuttered as to prevent run-on such as those Americans experienced in the Great Depression, and significant efforts will be made in regards to stabilizing the lira. All things considered, the situation is unequivocally unfavorable, but far from hopeless. That is, as long as the Duce can maintain control. Well, we're back at war. Destroyer? Carrier organization battleship stuff. Good, good, good. More artillery? Eh, it's a little bit ahead of time. Get some of this. Alright, I should have put my ships in here earlier, but whatever. Alright, shippy boys. Just in case. Can we go to war with all these guys? Launch it. Here we go. At least we're getting a little bit of action here. And kill them off. Just let, let these guys link up. Thank you. All right, not bad. They don't seem like they have a lot of soldiers, but I could be wrong about that. Six thousand manpower, nine divisions. They have militia, seven divisions. These guys have none, so. Not too bad, so preparing for the storm. Citizens of Italy have enjoyed an especially rich few years under the careful leadership of the Duce. Now, with the situation in the Middle East, it falls to their hands prepared to endure a time of austerity. The Italian people, after enjoying the sweet desert of, desert of success, was now tying their belts for the final showdown. Across Italy, there will be an overwhelming feeling that everyone, no matter their background, will have to sacrifice for the strength of Italy. Should the people of the Empire remain steadfast in their strength throughout this crucible, Italy shall come out scarred, but ultimately unscathed. Let's hope that everyone can endure with the Save the Lira. Waiting for the Lira to simply stabilize itself, so is untenable. Radical action must be taken to ensure the leaders once again firm in its value, lest our entire economy begins to collapse under the unbearable stress of the crisis. The value of our currency will be fixed to the price of gold, allowing for a more fixed and stable price point, ending the roller coaster price it is now devolved into. The only minor issue with this plan is our relative lack of gold reserve when compared to the Swiss and Americans, which could cause the standard uh, to falter somewhat. In rather bold suggestion, some of our economists have proposed that we seize all available gold materials from our citizenry, allowing for both gold, our gold reserves to be larger and for the demand of gold to, be, to rapidly increase. With breathing room secured for regards to our currency, we may begin more direct forms of economic recovery in both foreign and domestic markets. Ah, yeah. Let's take from our citizens. Come on, guys. Let's go in. You can't stop us forever. Never, ever, ever. To Aleppo. Raka. Okay, they're gone. Thank you. To your luck. I thought we were just here. Why can't we attack Kuwait City? They're, they're commies. We should be able to take them out, right? Come on, let me go in. I want to go in. The Shah of Iran assassinated. An uncertain future lies ahead, huh? 
Well, I guess it's time to do squeeze the Libya. Squeeze Libyans. Considering Middle Eastern oil supply is now entirely unreliable, we'll simply need to look towards our secondary sources of oil. The Libyan oil fields, as bountiful as they are, cannot match the sheer amount of oil buried underneath the Arabian sands, but they shall simply have to, have to do given our current situation. We shall attempt to somewhat alleviate our dire need for oil by increasing our extraction efforts in the Libyan deserts. Unfortunately for the people living there, this means that a significant amount of land will have to be sized for exploitation. While this is certainly a regrettable course of action, we must do everything necessary to ensure the blood of the empire continues flowing. Oh, fuel game for oil. That's not bad. Say the lira, the lira is a free fall. Runs on the banks, layoffs at record numbers. Every day it brings a new panic headline on the economic situation. Our national currency is steering on the brink of total collapse with confidence in the lira evaporating and no man going to work in the morning. Sure, he'll have his job soon come noon. Those who can avoid using the lira as a medium at all costs. Even the barter system has made a dramatic comeback. This will not stand. The government and the banks must do something, anything, to save our precious lira. Whatever the public thinks of our sovereignty, well-being, and very identity as a nation depends on it. And we've defeated the Italian Empire. Uh, Italian? No, we are the Italian Empire. Now we got to beat up these guys. Or what's going to happen now? Oh boy, what is going to happen now? Oh, a little bit of lag. Ah, the Iranian civil war, my friends. But why are we still at war with these guys? Like we've already beaten them up. We've already beaten them up. So, well, not like anything's really happening here. Then, um, hmm. I guess we'll survey for another project then. Military austerity is gone. We didn't even need too much of that. Thank you. Well. Oh, maybe it's because these guys aren't called into the war. That's probably why. That makes more sense. Even though I don't think we're actually war these guys. Yeah, we're not. American humanitarian aid? Hmm. So. Um. At this point, I'm just going to do a lot of Diplo. Just because it doesn't make any sense why we can't just beat him up at this point, so. Oh, we go right on ahead. There we go. There we go, much better. Alright, we're going to be squeezing the Libyans. Oh, we actually get some convoys. I love it. I love it. And tame the six-legged dog. There's more important or more powerful corporation uh, within the Italian sphere than the Ente Nazionale Hydrocarburi. Controlling vast amounts of petroleum, the corporation served as one of Italy's greatest tools of maintaining the empire. In traditional fascism, the ENI has always been a useful puppet of the state, and there is a substantial overlap between the members of the ENI's upper board and the state's highest... Mag highest leadership. While this has promoted to a stronger relationship in the past, it seems to have now made us far less controlling of their work than ever was anticipated, with some party officials opting to favor their wealth in the ENI over the good of Italy. It's better to correct a mistake later than not at all, and the ENI needs to be reminded that it, it, that it functions only the pleasure of the Empire. If they happen to have any objections, we always have methods of impressing the point upon them, which would be a very good thing, so. Go to Jerusalem. We're coming back home, boys. Well, it's not really our home, but we all make it our home. Ah, oh, Jerusalem. Beat him up. Tel Aviv? Let's go bomb Tel Aviv. Beautiful. Now that is exactly as it should be. Oh, we, oh, I thought we ran out of stuff down here. Increase special forces deployment? Well, do we get an event, please? Because Oh, maybe not, because I kind of like the way this looks. Yeah, we're out of conflict. Okay, well then. Happy 1971, June 1st. And I guess maybe we'll go to war with Iran next? Oh, wait, can we say... It doesn't seem like we can really get involved in Iran, but... Alright, let's do one more focus reading, and then we'll call an episode. How about that? A little bit ahead of time. Let's grab some of this, because we can. Alright, then. Tame the six-legged dog. I think we did really, really quite a good job. Uh, go ahead and uh, head on home, guys. You did a great job. Hopefully our tanks aren't dying in the Middle East here. No, they're just kind of hanging out. As they should. And... Test our work. 75%. We're going to get nukes hopefully soon. So I'll leave it up to you guys. Should we do work for Italy? Or work for else? We'll probably do work for Italy, actually, then. Or float the currency. Become more unstable, but grow at a faster rate. Or a gold for the fatherland. Not bad. I'll let you guys decide. Even though I'll probably choose float the currency and work for Italy. But we'll do sideline at Matai. If we're going to have any hope of efficiently incorporating the ENI, as a full organ of the state, we have no choice but to deal decisively with its chairman, Enrico Matai. Some... 
have come to associate the company and the man is almost a single entity. And truth be told, they are not wrong. The chair sees the company like his child and he will never willingly give its vast wealth up without a protracted fight. Naturally, we do have a fair bit, fair many options to handle unpalatable business leaders. If our attempts at negotiating an agreeable deal with the oil dictator falls through, then perhaps the military may be willing to lend a hand. But regardless, hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we might just be able to wrap up the Italian campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great rest of your day.